Welcome to Season 5 of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we talk with enterprise and technology platform leaders about the people, processes, and platforms that make marketing and customer experience successful, scalable, and sustainable. This is what creates an Agile brand. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom, advisor and consultant for Fortune 1000 marketing and CX leaders and teams as principal and chief strategist at GK5A and best-selling author, keynote speaker, entrepreneur, and Agile certified coach. The Agile Brand Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to teksystems.com. To sign up for the Agile Brand newsletter and get the latest insights and articles on marketing technology and CX, or to purchase a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, go to gregkillstrom.com. You can also find all my books on Amazon and other retailers. And now on to the show. One quick note before we get started. I originally recorded this episode when I was a little bit under the weather, so please excuse my voice on this. Otherwise, I can't wait for you to listen. We are presenting our second annual Black Friday special episode where we focus on an aspect of retail, looking back on the current year as well as what retailers should be keeping in mind for next year. With the prevalence of online shopping and growing e-commerce providers, brick and mortar retailers require business intelligence tools dedicated to in-store analytics to stay competitive in an omni-channel world. Today, we're going to talk about real-time data and AI for in-store retail operations. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Joe Shastine, Global Manager, Advanced Analytics at Retail Next. Joe, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, looking forward to talking about this with you. Uh, why don't we get started with you giving a little background on yourself as well as what you're currently doing at Retail Next? Yeah, so again, as uh, my name is Joe Shastine. I'm the Global Manager of Advanced Analytics at Retail Next. Uh, my team that I manage is a group of analysts who help our customers and you know the physical retail space analyze both their in-store traffic as well as the shopping patterns of customers inside their retail spaces. So, you know, what we do using video cameras all strategically placed throughout a location really helps our partners to unlock um, more knowledge about what is going on uh, from the customer perspective in shopping in stores and, you know, what are the most effective sort of displays? You know, what do they like? What do they don't like about that? You know, we really help and partner with our with our customers in order to provide them with details on the in-store shopping experience. Great, great. So yeah, so we're going to talk about um, quite a few topics here today. So you know, but let's get started by exploring the potential of data monetization in stores and how how can stores truly tap into the data they collect. So let's get started by talking. You know, what are some of the challenges here? So traditionally, it hasn't been easy to collect a lot of data at key points in the brick and mortar retail level. What are some of the challenges here that, for instance, online retailers don't run into? Yeah, so, you know, of course, in the physical retail environment, being so dynamic with, you know, all the shoppers that can be in an individual location, it, it can be quite challenging. But, you know, Retail Next in particular has invested considerable resources, you know, over the years to make sure that we are accurately able to track people as they enter a store, as well as what they're doing inside the store. So, you know, I think just one aspect of it is, you know, there's been a lot of development recently in, you know, camera technology. And I think we've been able to make, you know, really extensive use of those developments to really track effectively, you know, people as they're shopping um, in a store. Uh, But, you know, of course, there are also other challenges that, you know, you'll run into just being in a physical space with how dynamic the shopping experience can be. Uh, But you'll also, you know, have to deal with, in some cases, you know, tech outages, other sort of tech changes. You know, there's been a lot of developments in the Wi-Fi space with Mac randomization and, you know, certain ways that you can kind of monitor and track customers over time um, and you'll be able to identify them. So there's been, you know, a lot of challenges that you run into in the physical space, but I think that, you know, we've really come a long way with being able to really identify uh, customers as they're entering locations and, you know, what are those key behaviors as they come into the store? But yes, of course, um, it's always going to be a little bit more challenging for some of those key metrics as well around abandonment and some non-conversion metrics that you're going to quite easily be able to see from, you know, something like an e-commerce style um, analytics. But, you know, I think we're bridging the gap there and we've made a lot of development recently using camera technology to provide answers in the physical retail space. Yeah, so you, you touched a little bit on this, but I wonder if you can dive a little deeper then, you know, what, what data do retailers need to collect then 
in order to be competitive with online retailers that can, you know, in many ways collect data a lot easier, as, as, as you just said? Yeah, so it really depends, you know, on the nature of the business and especially the questions that they are, you know, most interested in addressing about either it's the customer experience, you know, the operational side of things, the, you know, visual merchandising side of things as well. But, you know, I would say in general, you know, the key metric is, you know, Retail Next does traffic and, you know, traffic is a key metric that, you know, really is very vital towards, you know, understanding what the opportunity is of a physical retail store, right? You know, without having traffic, you really don't know what your conversion rate could be or what that overall opportunity of what that store could look like, right? With with your sales, it's hugely important to understand that. But, you know, there's countless instances where you can look at multiple locations with similar sales levels um, and their traffic numbers might be very different, right? So you can see yeah. very differences, uh, large differences in conversion rate, large differences in average transaction value, and really having a sense as to, you know, what your overall store traffic is a huge factor for being able to effectively understand your stores, you know, rate them effectively, group them effectively, you know, understand where there's additional opportunities and also understanding where there might be, you know, opportunities have already been maximized. And it, that's really kind of one of the key metrics that, you know, I would say is just that basic traffic into store to start with. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, it's 2023. So we have to talk about AI. Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's a requirement. Um, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about that here as well. You know, what, what is the role of AI here? And, you know, I understand you're using some pretty interesting technology in the, you know, over 100,000 retail stores that you're active in to analyze behaviors, give retailers more data. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so a lot of what Retail Next has been doing is, you know, in the space of, you know, AI with machine learning on our cameras, which, you know, really has been allowing us to better track, you know, customers as they enter it, enter into retail locations, better able to identify, you know, differences in customers and, you know, making sure that, you know, we're tracking people and not, you know, objects or, you know, shopping carts or other sorts right. of aspects. So it's really been valuable in that space and, you know, really lets us have a very high degree of accuracy, you know, over 99% in most in instances. But, you know, we can also use this other sort of machine learning and AI technology in order to train other sort of, you know, more niche use cases, right, of, of identifying certain behaviors or to identify staff members. You know, I think one of the cases that we typically, you know, like to cite uh, for identifying staff members is, you know, being able to identify staff members based on, you know, the unique kind of color of their uniform. And being able to parse that out separately from, you know, customer behavior and the staff behavior based on what they were wearing has been, you know, really a powerful aspect of what, how we've been able to use, you know, machine learning and AI in, in, such a, in such a respect. Yeah, yeah. Interesting stuff. So changing topics a little bit here, you know, reading headlines and following several uh, retailers, there are some big changes happening lately with more retail and mall spaces closing their doors in big cities. You know, let's talk a little bit about the future of physical retail. You know, what does it look like? Why are mixed spaces important? So first, you know, let's acknowledge some of the challenges here. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons why retail and mall spaces are closing their doors. Uh, is the future simply less of these spaces or are they going to look different? You know, I, I think that the answer really is kind of it's going to be a little bit of both. Um, yeah. You know, I think we've seen some of the consolidation in, in mall spaces already primarily in, you know, maybe the, the lower uh, rated malls, you know, the CD level malls, but those A and B malls are, you know, always going to remain. They're still a, a huge factor for driving traffic to, to retailers and providing, you know, a new customer base for retailers as well. So I think those are always going to be important, important extensions of brands for retailers, you know, in those mall spaces as well. You know, of course, the lower, you know, the lower tier locations are probably going to be the ones that we're going to see, you know, start to consolidate or, you know, we'll see less of those spaces. But, you know, at the same time, like you mentioned, too, even those locations that are going to remain and will have to look different. They'll have to adjust for the different customer demands and making sure that they're really providing more of that kind of hub and an experience, you know, making sure that associates are very well trained, very knowledgeable about the products that they're able to sell, you know, making sure that the spaces are very easy to shop and clear for customers to identify what they're looking for, you know, really just making sure that these retail spaces are meeting the needs of customers and allowing them to have the experience that they want, right? Most customers go into stores at this point because they want to interact with the product or they want to interact with associates. So it's really important to make sure that the retail spaces that we do have are meeting the needs of customers and making sure that, you know, we're having associates meet customers out 
you know, on the floor where, where they have questions or where, you know, they need to, you know, get help with certain aspects or find a different product, right? That's, that's really key. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of data that can be provided on the in-store experience around that. And, you know, I can, I can mention a few of those metrics that we can provide on that, but, you know, that's really kind of a, a key thing that is really important with, you know, what we're doing, what the future of retail spaces are going to look like. Really being able to analyze that is also a, a key part of the future as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be good to if you did mention, you know, some of the some of the metrics you have around yeah. there. I mean, you know, the research that and we'll link to the research in the in the show notes, of course, for everybody listening. But it'd be great to, to explore that a little deeper, if you don't mind. Definitely. So, you know, kind of going back into, you know, discussing about retail and mall space, spaces closing their doors. You know, one of the, the key metrics that, you know, we're starting to look at um, and we're starting to, you know, put into more places around is, you know, a metric that we like to call pass by traffic. So that can really, you know, let you know as to what is the overall opportunity. So not just, you know, opportunity of traffic into your store, but what is even the opportunity of your location, right? Do you have a good flow of people walking right outside your door? You know, which locations, you know, might have more pass by traffic than others. And that can be really kind of a key metric that you can use to evaluate, you know, your real estate and what is going to be your potential, you know, most valuable locations in different areas. And then kind of going back inside the store, you know, there's additional metrics that can be provided around interior analytics, around like interior dwells. So where are customers when they first come in the store? What is capturing their attention? What is driving their shopping behavior? Where you know, where are they interacting with product? Um, that can be something that's also crucial as we try to understand, you know, when customers come in, what is that experience that they're looking for? And you can use, you know, interior zone traffic and interior zone dwells in order to really uh, understand more about the customer behavior and, you know, what is really driving their positive shopping behavior versus what are they kind of skipping or what are they missing? And, you know, what does that overall journey look like in store? And can you change that if you want to? Do you want them to have an experience that's different from the way that you're that it is currently? Um, and you can use in-store metrics in order to, you know, test out, you know, layout changes that might change the experience and the journey of the customers. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, and so, you know, we... I guess as a bit of clarification, you know, we, we, I mentioned mixed spaces and and you refer to it as well. You know, what, what exactly are these for those maybe less familiar with the term and, you know, why, why are the, why are these such an important aspect of, of the future of retail? Yeah. So mixed spaces are going to be those areas that both have retail, you know, maybe living, maybe, you know, theaters, dining, other sort of aspects at this point, you know, even like children's playgrounds, those sorts of aspects as well to drive, more traffic into, you know, what would typically have been just, you know, a regular shopping, you know, mall area that would have just had retail. So in in this case, right, those mixed spaces can be, you know, very important because they provide that sense of, you know, permanence, right? You're, you're going to have consistently parents bringing their children to a playground that might be, you know, inside a mall. I know there's some malls by me that have started to expand out with this. And you always see those areas of, you know, just create, you know, teaming with children playing and, you know, parents kind of sitting by watching them. So, you know, those sorts of aspects are are really vital, making sure that retail locations always have a consistent flow of traffic. And, you know, especially with the living spaces as well, you know, having those residences above different retail spots always do, like I mentioned before, ensure that there's that consistent flow of both, you know, pass by traffic and then potential traffic into the various retail locations as well. So, you know, we've just seen the mixed use spaces just continue to grow. And, you know, we expect that to continue into the future as, you know, malls are definitely trying to make sure that people are coming back out and, you know, have a reason to go into to retail stores again. Before we continue, I'd like to introduce you to a sponsor of the show, Partner Hero. Customer service outsourcing has long been available mainly to large enterprise businesses with long-term contracts and onerous procurement processes. Partner Hero is challenging business as usual and bringing the benefits of outsourcing to small and medium businesses as well as startups. With short, flexible contracts and fast ramp-up times, Partner Hero is making customer support outsourcing a viable option for small and medium businesses and startups. It's perfect for companies with seasonality expecting a temporary spike in volume or that simply need to scale up. And their focus on quality means your customers will get an experience that feels like it comes from your team. If you're ready to bring in outside customer support help for your company that feels like it's part of your existing team, check out Partner Hero. 
Head on over to partnerhero.com slash agile. That's partnerhero.com slash A-G-I-L-E to book a free consultation with their solutions team. Mention you heard about Partner Hero from the Agile brand and the way of the setup fee. Now let's get back to the show. So let's, uh, last topic I wanted to talk about is optimizing operations with real-time data analytics and, you know, why this is especially important now amid current trends like retail theft, the Taylor Swift economic boom, which we'll get to in a minute as well, and, and holiday shopping, which is, um, which is uh, upon us here. So what do real-time data analytics allow retailers to do to help them stay competitive? And you know, what does this look like when it's done well? Yeah, so I think there's multiple ways that it can be done well. I think that the first aspect of real-time data analytics is it allows for your store employees to maybe make more adjustments on the fly, right? As it gets more crowded than maybe expectations were, maybe having some sort of alerting system that enables you to understand that, hey, there's a certain amount of people in this line, maybe we need to drive another associate over there to maybe do some queue management or, you know, understanding what your power hours look like around the holiday season. You know, when am I getting my peak traffic? When do I need to make sure that I'm planning my non-selling tasks to, you know, not be taking place, right? You don't want to be doing that when you're having your largest inflow of traffic through the day. You want to make sure that you have your associates out there and, you know, able to meet the customer where they're at and provide that customer with the right experience that they want. So, you know, I think just with real-time data analytics, you know, one of the ways is just, you know, empowering your employees to make better decisions and understand where customers are at, you know, but at the same time, it allows you to make better decisions too around staffing levels and adjusting on the fly to really account for, you know, various changes in, in traffic and in overall kind of occupancy of your locations. But I would also say at the same time, even just with with real time data analytics, you know, it's also not just, you know, one team that I find, you know, when we talk about yeah. what does it look like when it's done well, it's not just one team, right? It's not just maybe operations or visual merchandising, um, you know, or customer experience, right? It, it's it's pretty much a kind of cross communication, kind of cross working through all of these different channels and all of those different, um, you know, potential teams that might own different parts of the customer experience, making sure that they're able to utilize the data that we have in order to, you know, drive the behaviors that they want to see, you know, whether that be, you know, getting customers to a certain part of the store where key product is located or, you know, showcasing some certain advertisements or new displays, right, with with new product or clearance areas, right? It, it's all kind of going into the cross functionality of how you can use traffic and interior traffic and dwell analytics, you know, across the different across your different teams to really work to fix, you know, any sort of experience issues or inefficiencies within the experience that, you know, you're, you're trying to, to account for. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, as I mentioned, we're, we're going to link to some, some research that retail next, um, recently did, uh, you conducted your physical retail traffic and sales report, which analyzes foot traffic trends during Taylor Swift's eras tour, as well as, um, August, 2023 data. Can you share a little bit? Um, I, I know you've shared a few things here and there throughout the our conversation so far, but share a little bit about you know overall what it, what did you find? Yeah, so you know I think what we were finding was a, a pretty nice positive impact in traffic to retail in I would say probably more moderate to you know medium sized cities of, of her tour. You know I think back in I believe the summer. So we, what we looked at, just as a quick way to kind of go through the methodology, is we, we looked at traffic into various retail locations. You know, within the cities that we report on was you know Nashville, Santa Clara, Atlanta, Minneapolis, and Pittsburgh. Um, and what we were just looking at was kind of trends into retail around the concert venue in the few weeks. The typically we looked at the same days leading up to the concert three weeks leading up to the concert, as well as then the change on the concert days. And, you know, what we noticed kind of across the board was a general uptick in traffic. Now, you know, there's many different factors that can account for this, but, you know, we, we did see that the times that Taylor Swift was in a certain city, we were definitely seeing a positive uptick in traffic for the retail around those areas, you know, in particular in the Nashville location, which did see a very large uptick in traffic trends for the dates of her concerts compared to what we were seeing in the weeks prior to. So, you know, I, I think there's lots of factors in there, but, you know, Taylor Swift definitely in, in her tour, we definitely saw a nice correlation between where she was touring and what the traffic trends were looking like in, in those cities on her tour. Yeah, yeah interesting. 
Also, according to the report, uh, U.S. retail sales were up. You know, this report was showing August versus July numbers, showing continued consumer spending despite some lingering fears of of recession. Uh, Do you think this bodes well for 2024 or is it too soon to tell? And what should retailers be looking forward to or not in 2024? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's definitely a positive signal. I mean, there's still a lot of factors to consider, especially when, you know, we're looking at some sales metrics, right? I mean, I I know inflation has been dropping, but we still have to consider that a lot of, you know, some of the sales increases that we've been seeing is, you know, just due to some of those prices being um, kind of pushed down to consumers. And, you know, we're still seeing a, a nice basket size, but basket size is still you know, slightly year over year. So, you know, I think a lot of it, there's still positive signals, right? I, mean, I think, you know, I've just seen other reports, you know, consumption is still, you know, strong, if not even up, up recently. So, you know, people are still buying, I think there's still, you know, positive aspects to that. And, you know, as we've continued to, you know, analyze data more recently as well, you know, I think we're kind of settling into, you know, a, a little bit of a reduction in year over year trends from what we're seeing from maybe both the traffic and from our side of things, you know, sales in some cases, but, you know, I, I think we've, we've settled in nicely at, you know, we're not seeing large declines anymore. We're not seeing huge swings in, you know, positive or negative trends for traffic. You know, the last few months that we've been seeing have been pretty stable in about maybe, you know, a 2 to 3% decline in year-over-year traffic trends. Um, as we get into holidays, I think, you know, that generally tends to... I would generally expect that to remain fairly steady. You know, we might see some upticks depending on some holidays and maybe some changes in like days of weeks as, you know, Christmas shifts a little bit um, right. this year compared to last year. But, you know, I think for the most part, I, I I think we've seen more positive economic indicators, right? The All the claims about recessions, you know, within the year seem to, you know, hopefully not be coming true. So that seems to be a positive indicator as well. Um, and, you know, I think there there is some, you know, positive signs for 2024. But, you know, I, I still think at this time, you know, we're definitely probably trending more towards, you know, very slight year over year declines at this point, at least from, you know, the traffic metrics that we're seeing. But, yeah, definitely sales are a little bit more uh, swingy or volatile than that, I would say. You know, we're seeing some positive trends, but, you know, still some slight negative declines as well with sales as well. Well, Joe, thanks so much for joining the show. I've got one last question before we wrap up here. Um, you've given a lot of great advice and insights already. Uh, what's one next best action you'd recommend for those listening who want to improve their in-store analytics? What should they do first? Yeah, so I think I'll, I'll kind of address this in two ways, one with a very short, immediate term recommendation, maybe one that's a little bit longer. You know, as we've just had Black Friday, which, you know, typically across our retailers is, you know, most frequently the number one day for traffic in the year. You know, I recommend, you know, definitely start looking at your trends if you haven't already from a traffic and a sales perspective in the lead up to, you know, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. That last week for Christmas, you definitely start to see very high traffic. So just making sure that you're prepared for, you know, the month of December to account for, you know, any anomalies that we might see in your individual uh, traffic performance throughout the month of December as you might lead up into that last week of Super Saturday, so the last Saturday before Christmas, um, as well as the week leading up to Christmas, making sure that you have the right labor, the right people in your store to affect the shopping experience that you would like to have for your customers. And then secondly, I would say it would just be to, you know, assess what are your goals are for your store and what are you looking to understand about the customer experience? How can you continue to use data, you know, whether it be entrance traffic data, sales transactions, or, you know, ideally interior traffic and dwell data to design tests that's going to really improve the customer experience and ultimately affect your bottom line? You know, I think there's lots of different technology that can be used to help address those questions and to see what is effective, you know, from zone dwell data, from understanding where customers and staff are most interacting in their store journey. Um, There's lots of data that can be used in lots of Lots of considerations that can be made to use data to improve the customer experience. Yeah, yeah. Again, I'd like to thank Joe Shastine, Global Manager, Advanced Analytics at Retail Next, for joining the show. You can learn more about Joe and Retail Next by following the links in the show notes. Thanks again for listening to the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.gregkillstrom.com. That's G-R-E-G-K-I-H-L-S-T-R-O-M.com. 
To get a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, visit my website or you can find it on Amazon or other retailers. The Agile brand is produced by Missing Link, a Latina-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, stay agile.